So today, tell me about today. Why is today special? Well, it's National Nutrition Month, and then today is uh, National Registered Dietitian Nutritionist Day, and we're celebrating all the work that RDNs and RDs across the country do for our communities, and so it's a really cool day. So, and the whole month is a mm -hmm. celebration for National Nutrition as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So, um, it's called Beyond the Table is the theme this year, and it's basically taking, we focus a lot and what's on our plates and what's on the table and what we're eating and what this month's theme is about is focusing on, okay, what's going on behind the scenes to get the food there and what do we care about and how can we help our communities do that? And so registered dietitians are resources in almost every community to kind of help medical teams or churches or schools really focus on their health and nutrition. So it's a way to highlight that. So what are some common myths about dieting and nutrition that you want to kind of just put a stop to or mention for this month? That's a great question. So myths. Um, I think the biggest one that I tackle almost on a daily basis is, let me take this. <laughs> um, I think the biggest myth that I take on kind of every day in clinic is that one size fits all and that one diet works for everyone um, and that we kind of have to be perfect in our uh, approach toward health. And I, it's a myth because that's just simply scientifically not true. We're an evolved species. We have different medical conditions, different genetics, um, different hormones, different living situations, different socioeconomics. You get the gist. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to honor individuality here because then you can create a lifelong plan that really works for you and your family versus, oh, I, this didn't work out for me, but why does it work for her or him or whatever? So going off that, what are some of the best things that you find like that can apply to everyone? Like, so the email that we got was Mediterranean diet mm -hmm. or a keto diet, intermittent fasting, stuff like that. Yeah, I love that the Mediter Mediterranean diet was the most Googled diet. It's my favorite. I like to call it eating pattern versus diet because in my opinion, if you feel like you're on a diet, it doesn't, it's not, it's it's not like you want to be on it. Whereas if we describe it as Mediterranean eating pattern, it's like, oh, this is what I'm eating on a regular basis. And so generally speaking across the board, I suggest people get more fiber, which is what the Mediterranean diet embraces. Um, typically it, it focuses on adding more whole grains, more beans and legumes, more fiber rich foods like um, fresh fruits and vegetables, things of that nature that are accessible and inexpensive. And then it does have the fish component, which most people, um, I wouldn't say most, maybe many people are turned off by, but it doesn't have to include that. You can amp up the amount of vegetables and fruits that you have without actually thinking about the fish part if that kind of grosses you out. Um, as far as the other diets on the list, um, I like to say to my patients, you know, if you're gonna play around with things like the keto or intermittent fasting, I think paleo is on there, DASH diet, those were the ones. If you're gonna play around with it, I think the first question to ask yourself is, can it do harm? And in some cases it really can. And so having a medical professional like a dietitian is really important because we can help you say, oh, uh-oh, this might do this if you try it. Or, oh, go ahead and try that and let's watch this value, make sure it doesn't get worse. When it comes to fasting or, or anything like that, um, do you find people get sick or something if, and they change their diet because they're not getting all the proteins and stuff that they used to or something like that? Yeah, uh, so it sounds like you're asking, um, what are the concerns with intermittent fasting? <laughs> <laughs> or fasting in general, got it. Um, yeah, so the concerns depends on the individual. But anytime we're restricting food, intermittent fasting suggests that you eat at a certain period of time during the day and then you're not eating, right? So sometimes it's eight hours, you're eating between eight and like say five or six, or you're doing a 12 hour where it's eight and eight, right? So you're only eating in that time frame. So my biggest concern actually, besides the scientific stuff, is the joy of life. Like sometimes with diet culture, we forget about that. And so I remind my patients about, hey, if you wanna go to a birthday party or a holiday party or just a general like, fun thing to do, this might negatively impact your joy and your ability to connect with people, which is as important as what you eat. So that's number one. Number two, health-wise, um, fasting, you're, you're not putting fuel in your body to do stuff. So for some people who have diabetes, this can be a really big problem because their energy, their fuel is stuck in their blood. It's not getting into their cells, and so they don't have enough fuel as it is. So they can have adverse health effects 
just by doing that, by doing fasting. And so it's kind of this, this balance. Other folks um, who don't have that risk might risk rapid weight gain once they stop because intermittent fasting is really hard. And so if you restrict, 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 it can affect your hunger, hunger cues. And then now all of a sudden we stop because it's not sustainable, so all the weight comes back, which is generally worse according to research. Why, do you, why is a balanced diet important going off that intermittent fasting? Oof, okay, that's a good one. <sighs> that's like the million dollar question. <laughs> that really is a good question. So I, so I can answer it personally and professionally. So professionally, a balanced diet is important because uh, our bodies are so complex that if you start to focus on manipulating one thing, then you affect like all these little things you didn't even know you could, and you might not even know that you're doing it. So it can offset the balance inside and you don't know and cause more problems than you solve. So health-wise, that's what a balanced diet does is instead of counting macros, which some people choose to do, balancing the plate and adding fiber can really manage all the things without you having to think about it. So it leaves your brain space for other stuff that's fun. Um, personally, I think a balanced diet is important is because I want to spend um, the amount of time preparing foods and eating foods that I decide. I want to I wanna decide how much that is, and I don't want it to monopolize my whole day thinking about food and prepping food and grocery shopping and all the things. And so if you have a balanced eating pattern, you start to get in the habit of kind of doing your thing for your family, for yourself, so you expend less time on this one thing so you can spend it more with your family or doing whatever it is that you love. And so I think balance brings that there versus restriction, moderation is often tossed around that hasn't worked for decades. Um, you don't feel restricted when you balance. You feel like you have a little bit of what you want and a little bit of what you need and then you have the health that comes with it.